everyone, this is Fantasy Esk and welcome back to the Sims 4 Vampire Amazon Royal Saga with the Salazar Coven. We are picking up in the throne room after the terrible event which occurred in our mini movie, The Death of our scholar Lady Meredith. So let's quickly go over what exactly happened. I think we were pretty clear on the direction things were going to take because we kind of walked through what Sarana's intentions were in the previous episode and how she was going to follow through with that. So the mini movie was essentially continuing where we left off. Meredith, she came to Guinevere um, Markets and she was asking Sarana what she wanted her help with. Um, and at one point she stood up so that she could go get some scholarly materials. Now Serana over there, she was like, mm, well, I didn't want to speak to you about something, more like I wanted to do something. Um, and then Meredith, she suddenly just collapsed and then, you know, she was struggling to breathe and this was so heartbreaking for me, but she said, Serana, help. And Serana didn't do anything. She was just smiling maniacally in the background while Meredith fell to the floor um, in her last throes. So she died. Now as that was taking place, someone, someone stumbled into the scene, unseen by Serana herself. So currently at the castle we have with us Princess Juno and Juno didn't go to Academy that day. She kind of saw Serana going out towards the markets, which she never sees Serana do, and she's a little genius. She's intelligent, right? So she got curious about what Serana is doing um, around, around town, I suppose, uh, without really letting anyone else know. Typically, you know, if she's got an errand to run or something like that, one of the other vampires is, is aware of where she's going. So Juno let curiosity get the better of her and she followed Serana to Guinevere Market. Now in the previous episode we spoke about how Hades gave Serana access to some powers or spells 
um, which would ensure that any non-vampire in the building would forget what occurred. So the citizens aren't exactly reporting to the vampires says, oh, your physician killed your scholar. Nobody's saying that because they can't remember what happened. But Juno is not a immortal. She is a vampire. So that spell didn't have any effect on her. And she, you know, when the doors were open, walked in and just saw a glimpse of what was happening. So she kind of freaked out and she ran away from there. Now, Juno, she saw enough to know that Serana killed Meredith. Well, what is she going to do with that knowledge? So straight after that, she pretty much ran to Academy. Um, even though she's intelligent, she's still a young girl. She must have been scared by what she saw. Um, and, you know, I, I think she was thinking through what she's going to do with this information and who she can go to and what's happening, kind of processing um, the events. And then Serana came back to the castle and she did feel guilty. I think whatever that compulsion was, it stopped, it fell away from her or broke off once you know the deed was complete but she remembered everything she did and her motivations for everything she did so she knows why she did it but she doesn't feel the same about it anymore right like when she was doing the act under compulsion she was okay with it when the compulsion kind of fell away then she started regretting and feeling really guilty about it but she still understands how she felt in the moment she did it. So it's a little bit confusing, but there we go. That's what Saran is going through. Um, you know, Meredith was a friend of hers, actually, and she was good. She never made Meredith, um, or she never made Serana feel in danger or afraid or anything like that or looked down upon, um, probably because, you know, she was a bit of a kindred spirit, having gone through that in her youth. So there was that, but then she kind of figured... It's too late to regret. There's nothing that can be done. I didn't have a choice. I did what I had to do, right? Or I was made to do. So there is that. And um, now we have this really, really depressing scene with the ladies in the castle. So basically, Lagatha, she has come back. Um, she's been called back, um, mainly because she along with Guinevere, got the news, or she brought the news, actually, that Meredith has died. So the the people were saying that she, or the people, what they remember, right, is that Meredith, she fell into the river, and she was swept away by the tide, and she drowned. And then when her body was pulled out, it essentially burned out in the sun, right? So that's what Lagatha was told. And so Lagatha shared that with Guinevere, who sent out soldiers to collect the ashes and such. Um, so that's been done, and it's been brought back to Lagatha. Lagatha's trying to hide the, the pain she feels right now by putting on a brave face. Um, she doesn't want to be the most distraught, because everyone expects her to be the most distraught, and that's gonna kind of, I feel like, weaken her, or she feels is gonna, is gonna weaken her, especially as a member of the Queen's Council. So she's over there putting on a brave face, but the Queen is noticeably upset about this, and, you know, so is Serana, even though, you know, Serana is the one who did all of this. So yeah, yeah, she, look at her. Look at this sadness, which is not fake, mind you, but it's... It's even more twisted because it's not. But um, yeah, she's she's going through that. The Queen's really upset by this. Guinevere, she's also trying to hide um, the pain she feels, mainly because she wants to be kind of a silent supporter for Lagatha. She doesn't want to break down in case... She wasn't that close to Meredith that she would, but you know, she doesn't want to show any hint of sadness. Um, so that Lagatha can, and Lagatha can lean on her. Now, even though she and Meredith were friends, where is it? Friends, as you can see over here, um, Guinevere never genuinely felt any sort of 
kinship to that degree with Meredith. Not like she does with Lagatha. She came to respect Lagatha at one point and then have feelings for her. But for Meredith, remember, it was always like a bit of a fake sort of like I'm gonna be courteous to you because we both serve in the court and are expected to be courteous to each other. But she didn't really it, and it was mutual. It was mutually um like on the surface. It was a shallow thing on both sides. So they weren't deep friends. Um and I don't know to what degree Serana knows that, realizes that, but maybe she did and that's why she picked on Meredith because who would want to trigger Guinevere? No one would. <laughs> that's why she didn't go for Lagatha because both the Salazar sisters would have been triggered by that. So now that the Queen is aware what has been happening and Juno hasn't said anything to anyone, um, I don't know how Juno is going to go about this, what she's decided, or if she's still deciding, but I think she's holding her tongue right now. If it was any other child that had walked in there, maybe if it was Kyra, she would have gone straight to someone and told them. But because it's Juno, and Juno is intelligent, right? Juno likes to think things through, and I think she likes to see the landscape. She wants to see what's going on. What is going on? How is Serana going to react to this news? What is Serana doing? Maybe she wants to get a clear idea of what she's dealing with before she tries to deal with it. So that's what's happening right now. Um, the ladies, they have sent out letters to the other members, like Catherine and Elaine, letting them know what has occurred. Um, and also, they've started making certain arrangements. So we're going to jump back in shortly so that we can actually see those changes made. Actually, before we do that, I'll just talk us through it. Basically, the Queen is saying now that the Scholar has passed on and died, we do need a replacement for the Scholar. So there is going to be a bit of a status change among the vampiruses. Someone is going to be promoted to that role. The Queen has decided that the Castle Keeper, Lady Elaine, will take Meredith's role of scholar. So she's going to be promoted from castle keeper to scholar. Um, and now, you know, she's going to be officially in charge of the youngster's education and all those kind of things. So this is probably going to make Elaine really happy and actually give her more hold over the political landscape, especially Juno, because now she'll be able to influence Juno from within the castle. Uh, as a primary educator. So that is going to be happening. And then, of course, the Queen is going to be looking for a new lady to resume the role of, or assume, I suppose, the role of Castle Keeper at Castle Sheba. So someone new, new blood, is going to be brought in um, from somewhere throughout the kingdom uh, or queendom. Empire? All of that to go ahead and serve in Forgotten Hollow as castle keeper. So those changes to the intro will be made from the next episode, but it's something we'll set in motion now. So I'm gonna go ahead um, bring over Elaine just so we can acknowledge that change that's happening, and then we'll have the new lady. Actually, we'll have Elaine and the new lady that's brought in presented in court, so that we can get an idea of what's happening. So we have new blood, guys. We have new blood, uh, which should be exciting for us. And how far along is she? She's still in her first trimester, but okay, let me go ahead and make those arrangements, and then we'll be right back. We have come back to the throne room with two very important guests, along with all the members of the Salazar coven that have been called back so that they can attend this particular meeting, which is quite important, obviously. Um, Meredith has died, and we do need replacements. So we have with us Elaine, Lady Elaine Dragon, our brand new scholar. She was castle keeper previously, and she has been promoted to that rank now. And then we have new blood to replace Elaine at Castle Sheba. So we have next to her Lady Catalea Salvatore, who was made by Sweetheart2016. I will leave the creator and the name of the sim in the description below, so you can find them on the gallery if you want. Uh, thank you so much for your lovely creation. She is just 
sweet, like so sweet. I'm very excited to have her with us. Um, now, Catalea over here hasn't gone through the Ascension just yet. So the only thing I'm pretty sure I changed on her when I downloaded her from the gallery was the hair because something was clipping. So I just switched her hair over. But I've changed nothing else because I wanted whoever made The Sim to be able to recognize them the first time we introduced um, them in-game. So this is what we have here. She's got like a lovely skin tone, I feel. A very lovely skin tone. Similar to uh, some of the other ladies, but I think her skin tone's like in between the really fair skin tone of um, the Salazar women and then the duskier skin tones of the dragons. It's got like a golden tone and it's kind of in between, which I like. So she has white hair and currently she has the white eyes. But when she goes through the ascension, she will get like a proper eye color um, when she's, you know, blessed by the goddess. She will have, after her makeover, which I give her, she's gonna have the appropriate, like, vampire appropriate eyes, and we'll have to see what color she gets. I'm not entirely sure just yet. Um, she'll get one of the seven colors, and then she's gonna get the the proper, like, vampiric ears as well. She's gonna get the elfish ears as part of her ascension. So that should be very exciting, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to keep the white hair because I, I do like that on her quite a bit. Let's take a closer look at her face. She does have a very pretty face, not going to lie. She does have a very pretty face. So this is her, guys, Lady Catalea Salvatore. I'm actually so excited for us to be introducing a, a new bloodline. You know, the Salvatores. They, they sound cool because I love Vampire Diaries, but... That, that would be absolutely amazing, I feel. Now, when I give her the makeover, it's going to be the same as, like, what I do for the other ladies. In that, I, she'll probably look like, like, she'll have a drastic change. But I don't change any of the features or anything physically, apart from, like, ears and stuff. Maybe eyes. Um, and by that, I mean eye color. Like, I don't actually move anything on their face. So when you guys submit sims to me, just know... I do not change anything on that sim physically. I keep them exactly as they came. The only thing I changed is eye color and I changed their ears that they have, like the elfish ears. Um, but yeah, she's going to go through that same thing. But I'm really excited to have her with us. Let me know what you guys think of Lady Catalea Salvatore. So she's going to be the brand new castle keeper. She's staying here temporarily so she can get to know some of the other ladies. But she is going to be returning to Castle Sheba uh, once this is over. Now, I think, how is everyone going in terms of emotions? Let's quickly take a look at that. So Catalea is, you know, presenting herself in court over here. Uh, Juno, she is... She she is kind of like masking her emotions. Now, I don't know if she was that close to Meredith. I don't think she was. Yeah, she barely knew Meredith. So she, I suppose, is able to see this all with a sense of detachment because she wasn't close to Meredith, so she's not heartbroken over it, but she knows what um, Serana did was a bit of a terrifying thing. Um, Kyra over here is kind of the same, which is intriguing. She wasn't that close to Meredith, so she's also viewing it as a, you know, from a detached kind of form. I mean, Meredith was her teacher, so Meredith was educating her when she was a child, but I suppose she never built any sort of relationship with her because Meredith spent a lot of time, I feel, outside of the castle, and then she was kind of just called in uh, to teach Kyra and Juno when required. So that's kind of intriguing. Elaine is quite upset, noticeably. She actually managed to build a very good relationship with Meredith um, while Meredith was in Castle Sheba, so I think, yeah, she's really upset that Meredith has died. And Meredith was, I think, she and Lagatha, I'm pretty sure. Like, she's friends with Lagatha, but she's close to Meredith. I suppose Meredith, um, opposite to Guinevere, always so, like, saw Elaine as, and they're cousins, saw Elaine as um, someone who was a lot more accepting and kind to her. 
even though Elaine might not have been, she was kind of masking a lot of it under like a fake exterior, but that's how Meredith felt. And I do think Elaine feels the loss of a, um, like a pawn, you know, like a piece, a chess piece that she may have needed to use in the future. So I think she's kind of upset about that. Catherine is also upset because uh, her cousin just died. Was she close to Meredith? Yeah, she was quite close. So she's upset about that, but she's trying to um, put a brave face on for everyone else. Um, I think Catherine, what's on her mind is like, they had the Day of the Goddess not too long ago and their prayers weren't really accepted. Um, so she's wondering if that was like an omen for this that was going to happen, like something bad that was going to happen. She's like, there's a million things going through her mind and she's freaking out right now. And she doesn't want to start panicking as the priestess because then everyone else is going to start panicking. So there is that. Lagatha, of course, would be upset. Her twin died. Her twin sister, who she was like closest to more than anything in the world and who she adored more than anything in the world, she just died. So, Lagatha, she feels quite broken on the inside. Um, and then Guinevere, we've kind of covered her case. Eden. Eden's also now trying to be welcoming because Cadillac is here with us. So, I mean, Cadillac knows the circumstances in which she's come, but I don't think Eden wants Cadillac to feel as though um, her existence doesn't mean anything to them. I mean, she's going to be an important part of the coven, so they have to try and welcome her. Um, so I think she's doing that. But Meredith served um, as Eden's council member for, I think, two seasons or something like that. So she and Meredith did start off with quite a strong relationship that, you know, has been replaced by some of the other ladies in court. But she remembers. She remembers the good times she had with Meredith and how much she trusted her. So definitely the queen feels a loss. And Serana, we can't even say anything for Serana. We can say nothing about Serana. She is just here causing all this chaos and mayhem. So there we go. That's all we have going on over here. Um, okay, I'm going to turn autonomy on. And I feel like at this point, Lagatha is going to excuse herself. She's actually going to go on her own to add her sister's urn, which they have over here. And I actually wonder if her urn is something they want to add to like this particular landscape. Um, I kind of feel like, I mean, obviously we have a place that the ladies go to or they have gone to before, but I feel like Eden would kind of want to change things. I feel like Eden would want to change things and she would want to keep, like this is the first death they've had within their generation. And I feel like she'd want to keep the memory of Meredith close. Um, and I feel like Lagatha is gonna agree with this, that they actually put uh, Meredith to rest on the castle grounds so that everyone has kind of access to her. So I think that's what's going to happen here. I feel like Meredith is going to be put to rest um, on the castle grounds where the ladies can have access to her. So let me go ahead and uh, get this kind of sorted. Okay. I feel like, yeah, we're going to have Meredith um, kind of buried over here. So let's actually see if I can pop in anything. Where are the plants at? Where are the plants at? Okay, let's, let's have a look. Looky, looky. Hold on a second. Hmm. Hold on a second. Let's see. Um, I kind of like pansies are cute. Maybe like a lily of the valley. That feels kind of nice. 
Okay, hold on. Hold on a second. Okay, there we go. I feel like this is going to be Meredith's resting place right over there. Is two enough? Hold on a second. Maybe two is enough. I think two is enough. So yeah, there we go. That's going to be Meredith's resting place that the ladies have access to. Let's just shift it a bit like that. There we go. Yeah, don't mind me while I just shuffle things around. So there we go. This is going to be Meredith's resting place. And um, it is quite late. I think everyone's going to come out and actually mourn her. So let's get everyone to mourn uh, Meredith over here. And this is, you know, different to what they've done in the past. They've kind of just taken the urn elsewhere. But Eden, she's, you know, a bit of an emotional creature. She's adamant that Meredith stays and Lagatha agrees with her. And of course, Guinevere is going to support Lagatha right now. So everyone can come and mourn Meredith. And obviously this would make Serana a bit nervous, I think, because if Meredith, you know, if her remains are on the lot, then she, like her ghost, may make an appearance. And the thing is, she's going to have to live on edge now because what is that ghost going to communicate or who are they going to communicate with, right, in regards to what? Like, can she get away with this? Is she going to get away with this? Um, she has no way of knowing. So I think underneath all of this grieving is actually panic. Um, this is like her expressing a whole bunch of things, how, you know, she's freaking out and stuff, the turn that events have taken. So everyone is going to mourn Meredith over here, and then, you know, Catalea is going to get to learn a bit more about Meredith. Obviously, she's heard of the scholar. Everyone in the Empire has, but she never had the chance to meet her in person. So, ah, oh, this is so sad. This is just so sad. This is heartbreaking. Is the princess... No. Look, Serana. Look at this, guys. Look at this. Everyone is over here mourning. Everyone is mourning over here. Um, even Silk Frost is over here. But she's walked away. She's, like, excused herself and walked away while everyone is still in the middle of mourning. And she was kind of the first one to do that. Juno, did you come out here to mourn? Come pay your respects, Juno. Pay your respects. Okay, Ju Juno's getting quite hungry. But why don't you come and pay your respects? Uh, you did see everything go down, and you're like the only one who is witness to it. Um, obviously, Serana doesn't know about this. But I wonder what Juno's going to do, or you know, how Juno's going to feel about all of this. She obviously has no clue um, why what happened did happen, but she just saw what did. It's okay, she's gonna go over here, she's gonna mourn. Everyone's been, you know, made aware of the changes that are happening. Okay, here we go. Ah, uh, I'm kind of intrigued by who, because autonomy is on right now, I'm intrigued by who stays here the longest. Like, Eden, she's she's finished mourning, but she's still here. She's still here. And the other two, Elaine and Guinevere, they're still going. Elaine, I almost feel like she is crying the most as like a show to everyone. She's showing everyone how distraught she is, right? Because she's assuming Meredith's role. But in reality, I feel like she's actually quite pleased. Like I said, she might be upset she lost a chess piece, but I feel like overall she's quite pleased that, you know, finally I managed to get into the coven. Finally. Someone, like I didn't even have to take anyone out. Someone else did the dirty work for me and I just got to step in really easily. And, you know, she's staying here the longest. That's interesting. So she stayed the longest. She left last. But I feel like it was that. 
her trying to be the most distraught, you know, like I really didn't want to have to come here and take over the role of scholar. I would never want something terrible to happen to Meredith. All of that drama is really what Elaine's doing. So okay, that's that's intriguing. That's intriguing. Now she's gonna give herself a pep talk. She's making like a bit of a show of this, I feel. She's making a bit of a show. Okay, where is she heading? Over here? Okay, I feel like, you know what, at this point, uh, so Juno over here, Juno, are you, maybe you should go eat, child. Maybe you should, oh, this is, this has gone bad, whoopsies. Uh, actually, can you have, let's have chocolate, let's have a chocolate bunny. Let's have a delicious chocolate bunny. That sounds really nice, actually. Who's gonna go eat that? Um, is this broken? Okay, the butler is fixing it. Thanks so much for that. So kind of you. So kind of you. Okay, grab your chocolate bunny. Num num num. Yes. Look at how nice that looks. It looks yummy. Okay, eat your chocolate bunny. That should give you some energy. Um, and I actually think Juno has... I feel like she's nervous right now to be in the same room as Serana. But she's not... She's not fearful of Serana. She's just wary, I think. She's trying to figure out what's going on in Serana's mind. But I feel like she's quite brave, like, to have noticed what she did and still be able to hang around the murderer. Um, it's pretty decent, you know. Okay, she's having a chocolate bunny. She was gonna go chat with Eden. But actually, I think, now that Elaine is in the the house, she's gonna go to Elaine. And I remember how Elaine was starting to talk with Juno through her father and starting to influence her and build and gain a bit of trust. I think now that she's assumed um, Meredith's role, Juno is going to approach Elaine because Elaine has established with Juno that you and I are both intelligent people and she's been teaching Juno about some of the vampire politics. So I feel like when it comes to trying to understand things like this and what's happening, Juno is probably going to feel most comfortable going to, well, her new teacher, her new tutor, um, Elaine. So they're actually going to come down here. Um, yeah, they're going to come down here. So, both of you, let's head to, hopefully they get some privacy. I think she wants to catch Elaine alone. But they're going to go on down and have a bit of a talk. And actually, before we do that, Lady Catalea Salvatore, I didn't go through her traits, but she is paranoid, a goofball, and gloomy. So I feel as though maybe the circumstance in which she's come in, she is going to be um, quite, yeah, paranoid of people, like other vampires, like who to trust and who not to trust, and also her own life, because she doesn't know what the heck is going on. For all she knows, someone might just have it out for the role of scholar. So I think she's a bit paranoid because of that. And I wonder if she's going to be able to build meaningful relationships in the coven and establish herself properly. So there is that. Uh, also, obviously, it's a sad time and situation. So I can understand her being gloomy about that. And then she was like, you know, she's going to be Castle Keeper, surrounded by all these ghosts of the past and, you know, powerful figures. So I understand, like, of the royal family. So I understand if that would make her gloomy as well. But I think dis despite it, she has a bit of a playful kind of interior, I feel like. Not exterior. I feel like she does have a playful side to her, but it takes a bit of work to bring out. Maybe only with people that she trusts. Um, she's able to, you know, time to time enjoy herself before she gets reminded again of how serious life in court is. So, that's kind of interesting. 
all in all, she seems like a a good a good person, a good figure. So okay, Juno. She's heading on down here. Where is Elaine? Okay, Elaine is making her way down as well. Uh, Juno is going to just be waiting over here. Maybe warm yourself by the fire while Elaine comes on down. Okay, so she's invited Elaine down here so they can have a bit of a talk. There's something she wanted to discuss with Lady Elaine because Elaine has established herself as someone who can be trusted. So she's going to console Elaine about the death that has happened. Um, come here and warm yourself. Warm yourself next to the princess. Okay, so while they're warming themselves by the fire, it is getting cooler, Juno is going to mention um, the death of Meredith, and then she is going to confide. Um, I think Elaine, suspecting there is a reason why the youngster wants to talk with her, and there is a reason why she's being a bit careful, like, you know, bringing her over in private, she feels as though there's some important information here. So she's going to make herself as approachable as possible, and she's going to make Juno feel as though she can actually tell her everything she wants to. So Juno is going to share with Elaine the incident which she was privy to, which is Serana, for some reason unknown to her, killing Meredith. So she's going to show all of that. And then Elaine is going to thank her for this information, and she's going to tell her, um, yeah, she's going to look at this. She's going to tell her to be careful of Serana, but not to tell this to anyone else. She's going to say, don't, don't share this with anyone else. And look, here comes Catherine. So Catherine's just walked in on them. And I think Catherine's going to be a bit curious. She's going to say, don't, don't share what? And Elaine's going to say, oh, nothing, nothing. We're just having a bit of a a tutor and student, like a mentor and a student talk. There's nothing extra going on. We're just discussing um, the lessons that she might have, especially now that it is her birthday and she's going to be aging up into a flippin' teen. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, when we come back ah, in the next episode, that is something that we're going to be doing. We're going to see how Catalea looks after her makeover. We are going to be having Juno's birthday and her makeover. So, yeah, a bunch of things happening at this point. A bunch of things happening. But look, they've both had a, a talk. Um, and now they're both heading out together. And she managed to tell Juno just in time not to share this with anyone else. And now Elaine is going back out to where the... Um, the tombstone for Meredith is because she's now like wanting to think through things. She just got She just got some new information. So she's like trying to process what happened What's going on right now? I think she's very intrigued by the turn of events So that's kind of what's going through her mind and Juno, she feels much better now that she has kind of shared what she has with Elaine and Elaine has um made her believe that, you know, I'll I'll take care of things, don't worry about it. Um, things are complicated, which obviously Juno is intelligent enough to not to put a fuss about it, but if Elaine has told her to forget about it, then she's going to forget about it and not mention it to anyone else. If there's any action to be taken, then Elaine is going to be taking that action. So... Oh my goodness, guys, so many things happened. So many things happened. And obviously now we're getting ready. We're going to have to get ready to take everyone on, you know, their first big trip to, um, uh, where is it? Over in Granite Falls, I think. First big trip to Granite Falls. Actually, no, it's Salvadorada, isn't it? I think the Autumn Caravan happens in Salvadorada. So they're actually going to go to Salvadorada together. Um... Not everyone's going to come, I think. Maybe like eight sims. So I'll have to see who comes in the end and who doesn't. Um, 
Who would we want? I reckon Eden. Eden would want to bring. Huh. It's so hard. Like, which ladies do you bring? Maybe we'll see who's in the castle with us. Actually, we definitely want to bring Juno because it's her birthday. Uh, Juno, maybe Kyra. I feel like it's important to bring the new lady so she can get to know everyone a bit better. Um, who else? Elaine as well. She just like entered the the court as scholar, so you'd probably want that. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. I suppose we could invite all the ladies, six, seven, eight, except for Serana. So maybe Serana is going to be left back at the castle because she's pregnant and, you know, she shouldn't travel. Maybe that's going to be her excuse. Like, I, I don't feel like traveling. Um, I'd rather just stay home and focus on my health. And I'm really sad right now. I don't feel like it's a good time for me to be moving around too much. But obviously, Serana doesn't want to be with everyone right now because she is a little bit panicky. She wants to be on her own. She needs to think about it if there's anything she needs to cover up. Maybe she needs to go to Hades to um, talk about a few things, confront him. Who knows? She she wants her own time. She doesn't want to be with the vampires right now. Um, and I think she feels even more guilty when she's in their company. So, okay, that works out. We can take all the vampire like vampiresses and leave Serana behind, along with Silk Frost. Um, but okay, guys, with that said and done, I'm going to leave off here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.